Hey guys, for Complex News, I'm Kiana Fitzgerald. The very mention of XXXTentacion can elicit a variety of reactions, but they almost always land in one of two camps, contempt or adoration. One group fully acknowledges the rapper's alleged wrongdoings, while the other focuses purely on his music. Now that he's passed away at the age of 20, his undeterred critics believe X's memory should still bear the blemish of his actions. But fans of his music feel like he made a lasting impact on hip hop and should only be remembered as an artist. Everybody is both right and wrong. While X was accused of committing some heinous acts, ranging from aggravated battery of a pregnant woman to false imprisonment, to many fans, his music was so impactful that he's seen in the kind of light reserved for artists who have changed the game, from Tupac to Kanye West. He died without a cleared name, though the charges have been posthumously dropped, which is usual with criminal charges when a suspect dies. He will likely always be known as an accused abuser who happened to also be a rapper. But what legacy did X leave behind as a rapper? The Florida native first made his way into the spotlight with Look At Me, a song that catapulted him to the center of rap in 2017. The track had been around since December 2015, but it snaked its way to mainstream after about a year of SoundCloud domination. Looking back, Look At Me wasn't exactly riveting. The first half of the song was entertaining enough with attention-grabbing production, but X's raps were borderline lazy and reminiscent of Lil Uzi Vert or Migos with a triplet pattern rhyme scheme and predictable interjections of A. But then, in the last 50 seconds of the song, X begins spinning a slightly different pattern, picking apart then rearranging his original idea so that its placement of triplet and duple next to each other feels right. It resulted in a jarring yet captivating juxtaposition. With the second verse, X sounded uninfluenced by anything else that surrounded him at the time. He just rapped from his core. That confidence and his unconventional delivery soared beyond many paint by numbers rap tracks that popped off at the time. Look at me was loud and raucous. That description could easily be applied to most of his work. I love my click like Kanye West, with its spelling now made familiar by memes, think mocking SpongeBob. It was over the top musically. The production was cacophonic, lo-fi, and blown out. X in turn used his voice to sprawl across the track dramatically. It was a new take on mumble rap. The meaning of the words and even their rhythm was far less significant than the repetition, the hammering of one rhythmic idea over and over with an intensity that leaves you no choice but to give in. As a rapper, X split himself off into two styles, elongated, slowly enunciated boasts like in Click, and razor sharp clipped phrases of unveiled threats, like I love it when they run. And to put it bluntly, I love it when they run is a creepy ass track. The bulk of the 2016 song is a metallic crescendo to decrescendo effect that will likely remind you of a horror movie score. X opens the song with the hook. The words themselves are intimidating, but X's voice, it's calm, it's reserved, it's collected. And by the time he starts his actual verse, his effusiveness is palpable. But it's not joy, it's pure masculine energy. Rap was already a world of hypermasculinity before X, but he took it to another level with his alpha dog or nothing at all approach to expressing himself. To be frank, he doesn't say much in the first half of his verse. He's just putting words together that rhyme. But then a break comes in the middle of his verse. When he starts spitting again, for real, it's almost like we're back at look at me. He uses the break to switch gears and focuses on verbally ending anyone and everyone who has something negative to say. His rapping accelerates the more excitable he gets, almost dragging him off beat by the time he finishes, but he manages to stay right in the pocket. X had that spatial awareness on many kinds of beats. An early song of X's released way back in 2015 is Riot. Over a crackly contemporary boom bap beat, he kept that same energy of his more jarring songs, delivering his bars with an aggressiveness that overpowered the relatively low-key production. But overpowering the beat was always X's MO. 
As a result, his producers would consistently give the young rapper their best work, so as to not have their contributions swallowed up by the force of his musical personality. I'm Sippin' Tea in Your Hood dropped in 2016 as a diss to millennial underground rap pioneer Space Ghost Perp, who's also from Florida. The beat, courtesy of new school gun for hire producer Ronnie J, sounds like it should be blasted from the system of a tank at the start of a war. It's designed to grab and hold your attention, but X adds layers to that intensity by spitting perhaps the most belligerent bars he ever recorded, going straight for Perp's neck. R.I.P. Roach, another 2016 song, is a punch in the chest from Jump with X screaming before he even says a word. It was this raw emotional expenditure, rarely seen in an unbothered genre like hip hop, that set him apart from other rappers, including his peers who experimented with the same style of delivery. Once X actually does start rapping on R.I.P. Roach, he maintains the same pace, yell rapping from the depths of his diaphragm in a way that sounds like he was just screaming directly into the microphone. Hey, cocaine for my breakfast, hold that pistol, yeah. In addition to rapping, X was also invested in singing from the beginning of his career. That interest was readily apparent on his 2017 debut studio album, 17. He took a step directly into the mental health discussion space with the song Jocelyn Flores, dedicated to his friend who died by suicide. On it, X sings and raps pointedly about his own struggles that stemmed from a troubled childhood and a subsequently rocky young adult life. It's sickening at the same time. Memory service through the great bond, but my uncle playing with a slip knot. Put some at a stress, got me fucked up, been fucked up since a couple months. They had a nigga locked up. X's final album, Question Mark, combined the sentimentality of 17 with the SoundCloud days of ignorant glory. Flashes of the old X popped up on tracks like Floor 555. In contrast to the low quality mixing of his early work, here, his vocals were finally incorporated into the production, instead of sounding like an afterthought. The whole thing felt like a death trap of a roller coaster gearing up to take off. His words were considerably more focused, but unbridled energy radiated off of him in waves, just as it always had. That's how X lived his short life, intensely and far outweighing anybody else in passion. X is being mourned on a global scale, with people defending his honor online and in real life to this day and for many days ahead. He's left an impact that can't be erased because of his alleged actions, nor his absence. He will never stand trial for the crimes he was accused of committing, but he will always be remembered for revealing his authentic emotions at every turn, and for creating an atmosphere where outsiders and misunderstood individuals can comfortably exist. X's openness and honesty made for an addictively compelling rap career, however short. For that reason, his name will ring out for years, if not decades to come. For Complex News, I'm Keanu Fitzgerald. Thank you.